we are back and this time we are going to talk about some sort of free performance it is ground effect it can work really good in your favor and also it can work against you we will look at some examples of takeoffs and landings in ground effect and then the difference between low wing and high wing aircraft for ground effect. The first is a takeoff from Wilson Bar in Idaho. We start with 20 degrees of flaps. The mixture is linked for altitude, this is high density altitude, airstrip in Idaho. And full throttle off we go. And as soon as I hit 40 miles an hour, we are in the air, but I stay in ground effect to gain more airspeed and that's how we got some free performance. This is Upper Loon also in Idaho. This airport is at higher elevation so I reduce the mixture to proper altitude, full throttle 20 degrees of flaps and I see my angle of attack indicator when I have lift and then just pull and as soon as I pull and I just push down to stay in ground effect. For this kind of airstrip that has rising terrain, it helps to get some extra free performance. Now let's see from the cockpit. You can see it is a long takeoff roll, high density altitude. You have less power and less lift than at sea level. I lift off push down and stay in ground effect the whole length of the runway. I think for high density altitude operations it is great to use ground effect so you get more performance from your airplane. Now let's see a takeoff from Soldier Bar also in Idaho also high density altitude. This airstrip has water bars and it is very rough so I cannot use the down downhill in my favor to gain more speed. I have to go slow over the obstacles. Once it gets flat, it is smoother, so that's when I start giving power. I lift off, and as soon as I am there, I just push down on the nose and I stay in ground effect. You actually have to push hard because you can feel the force of the ground effect pushing you up. This next airstrip is Lower Rune, also in Idaho. Also high density altitude and also rising terrain. So the airstrip is kind of shorter and for high density altitude I stay ground effect as long as possible. Then with extra energy I start to climb. Now we're going to look at this same takeoff from the pilot's perspective. This is a good view where you can see when I pull on the yoke to lift off and then you can see how I push on the yoke to go into ground effect. You can clearly see I'm pushing down on the yoke to stay in ground effect the whole time. Then with the extra energy I start my climb smoothly and smoothly start to retract flaps. This is a takeoff from Soldier Bar from the outside view. You can see I'm going slow on the downhill section. And then as soon as I can see smoother terrain, I accelerate, lift off, stay in ground effect to start then my climb into the valley. This is Bandera Airstrip in Washington State. It is lower elevation, so we have more performance. I still get into ground effect to go over the big trees that are the obstacles at the end of the airstrip. This is Choker Flats in Oregon. Even if you stay in ground effect for a short time, it always helps with performance and will give you more speed and more energy. So after the takeoff, you can start your climb with better authority, better speed. Here is an example of being in ground effect just for a short period of time. This is Dock Gravel Bar, 
Tillywamish River in Washington State. You can see here taking off from this gravel bar. You can see the ripples in the water. These are made by the vortices of the ground effect to the water. Now let's look at the theory behind ground effect. When an aircraft flies over a surface at an altitude of less than half its wingspan, it is under ground effect. The main reason ground effect occurs is because as pressure builds up on the underside of the wing, a cushion of air is formed which causes the aircraft to tend to float or even bounce on the runway. Here is another view where you can see how I move the yoke to take off and then as soon as I get airborne I push down to stay in ground effect. This is Sirene Station in Costa Rica. Carrying Bandera Airstrip in Washington State with a Cessna 170B. Here you also can see the movement of the yoke. The grass is wet, I want to get off the ground as soon as possible, so I push the nose, full power. As soon as the tail lifts, I add 10 to the more degrees of flaps and I'm in the air. And then I push down on the yoke to stay in ground effect. This gives me plenty of energy to get over the trees at the end of the earth. We are at the same airstrip, let's have a look from the outside view. The faster you start to go, the harder you have to push on the yoke to stay into ground effect. You can feel that you are getting pushed from the ground up, so you have to force the yoke down to stay into ground effect. Ground effect can be your enemy, you can float if you come too fast. This is an example of a Cessna 172 that starts to float and goes over the runway for a long time. You start every takeoff with ground effect. Now let's talk about the difference between low wing and high wing. Since the low wing is closer to the ground, you get more ground effect with low wing airplanes. Here I'm taking off with a CJ6 Nanchang and I'm getting to ground effect for the length of the runway. I am pushing on the stick and I can feel the force from the ground trying to push me up. In low wing airplanes you have to be more careful if you approach a speed because ground effect can be your enemy more than in high wing airplanes. This is where the angle of attack indicator works very well because it always gives you the right approach speed so you don't float and you don't sink, you just touch down at the right speed. Again, it's a bit more critical on low wing airplanes to be at the right speed. For push flying and short strips, gravel bars, I use a technique that I use ground effect into my favor. It lets me approach at very slow speeds with less power. Once I am very low into ground effect, I can feel the airplane does not want to sink anymore. Here is a view from the cockpit, ground effect landing into a gravel bar, you can see the movements I do with the yoke and the throttle.
This is a fun approach, follow the river, into a left turn into the gravel bar, going slow and at the end on crown effect. The way I practice this is on a long runway, I stay like two feet off the ground, in ground effect and I get used to the feeling. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I learned something about her effect. And please, if you want to support my country 182, join me on Patreon. Description of this video. I navigate uh, below my country 182 on the top right. You can click on Patreon, and it will take you to the Patreon page where you can select your membership level. It will show you the tiers and everything. By becoming a Patreon for Back Country 182, you will not only be helping the YouTube channel, but you can also get direct advice or discount on some aviation products for your airplane or advice or products for your airplane. We can chat, uh, video call.